Hey YouTube, it's your boy, uh, Skinny Penis. It's April 30th when I recorded this, and Bushiro had finally revealed all of the Nation Strides from Premium Collection. Also, you should play Premium, it's a good format. And we're gonna talk about it, because that's free content for me, and you get to look at me for the next probably 10 minutes, so we're just gonna go over all of them, and then rank them, because... That's the kind of clickbait people like. So, all progenitor dragons do two things the same, which is their cost. It's a regular stride, but you need to discard a copy of the Vanguard. It's ultimate stride without the GB3 or losing your G-Zone. And while they're in the G-Zone, face up, you can stride for free, but, like, they can't be turned over by cost or whatever. So, you can't be like, oh, I'll stride into this dude that flips anything. I'll flip over a copy of my progenitor dragon and then just stripe three. Can't do that. You should probably use it earlier when you don't need a finish or whatever. Yeah, first one. Progenitor dragon and total purity agnos. Looks like it's just like white Zoa. On place counterblast one, soul blast one. Call as many cards from your hand to all of your rear guard circles and draw three cards. This is weird because you have to call on top if you have things there. You need to fill up all of your circles with new dudes. So... You either don't want to call anything or lose your entire hand just so it basically becomes a free draw three. The fact that you kind of have to neg sucks. The kind, the fact that you have to call from hand means you probably won't have an ideal thing sucks. But it's a draw three, which is honestly kind of cool. Yeah, it sucks, but you got to do with it. That's probably why it's not going to be one of the better ones, but it is what it is and you get to deal with it. I don't, because I'm probably not going to be... Oh, wait, no, I play OTT. I guess I have to deal with it, too. Whoopsie. Um, Progenitor Dragon of Lightning Flame, Gilgal, or Gygas. I love Earthbound. Persona Discard, can't be flipped, free stride. Act, uh, Counter Blast 2, Soul Blast 1. Until the end of this turn, it battles all of your opponent's units in one attack. It gets 10k, and on hit, Counter Charge 1. So provided your opponent has at least two things, it's basically just Soul Blast 1 for 10k and board wipe which is good especially for like clans that don't have that like nubatama murakumo and yeah so like that's that's pretty good gotta say we love that board wipe and free cost so i'd say it's pretty good just because it's low cost board wipe and it says it attacks everything it screws over excel which is pretty good next Progeny. Progenator Dragon of Horizon Limit, Origorum, which just looks like sexy Venom when that one guy's love interest put on the Venom suit in Venom and she was sexy for some reason. That's what this thing looks like. Progenator stuff and on attack counterblast one, all of your opponent's power for their units becomes zero. So it's basically like a, a cheaper, weaker dust, but it's cheaper and doesn't require GB3. So like, that's pretty good. And it also works pretty well late game just because they would be at zero when they're at five damage. So like multi-attacking with Novas or whatever is pretty cool. It's pretty good. Get some early damage in or maybe finish. I don't know. Progenitor Dragon of Gloomy Dark Formido. That's an awful name. Regular Progenitor stuff. On place, Counterblast 1. For each of your open rearguard circle, your opponent retires a rearguard. And for th if three or more retired, Soul Charge 5 and draw one. All right, that's kind of eh. Because, like, you either A, can't rush, or your opponent has to, like, board wipe you, but also your opponent has to also not have a field, so, like, you kind of have to be behind and hope your opponent keeps it that way to, like, actually maximize it, because if not, it's just gonna be, like, counterblast one, retire a couple things. It isn't bad to retire things, but especially in premium, a single retire of, like, a couple isn't great, and it's also a random soul charge of five, so, like, it's probably not... Unless, except for, like, darker regulars, you'd probably want to at least, like, choose or whatever. So I feel like this isn't really helping any of the decks really do what they're supposed to do. ZTB doesn't care about soul charge five, draw one, when they could draw, like, 11 or whatever. Um, Spikes, it cares about the soul charging for, like, the original... What's its name? Miracle Ace, but, like, I don't think it cares about the extra five anymore. Dia has the 
apostle dude, Gastille, that can just, like, get guard restrict and soul charge stuff. So, like, I don't know what deck is gonna really want to use this even at first stride. It requires, like, a lot of setup for it to, like, be maximized, and that setup involves you kind of being behind. In order to, like, maximize it, you're really just getting charge 5, draw 1, which isn't that great. No. All right, next, dragon. We're at the whale, the the big boy, Baleen. Uh, progenitor dragon of deep sea, Balanarn. Bala Narina. That's an awful name. Uh, usual progenitor stuff. When your opponent guards, discard one, grade one or less, and retire the guardian. Okay, so it doesn't stop PGs, but it stops G guardians, which is dope. Yeah, it's pretty cool, especially in a deck like Aqua Force. You can start, like, poking them pretty quickly, or if they're at five and you have a lot of attacks, you can just force them to, like, drop a lot. So I feel like this actually functions as a good finisher, just because, like, if you have a, at least, like, a couple grade one or lowers, you could just force your opponent to guard with a bunch of shit, especially since, like, Aqua Force multi-attacks good. Grand Blue doesn't do it bad, but does it fine. I don't know shit about Bermudas, but this seems actually pretty good. And lastly is Progenitor Dragon of Regal Birth Megaloma. This is the green one, and regular Progenitor stuff. What it does is on place, discard two. For one time during the next turn when you would lose, return all of your handed damage to your deck, shuffle, put the top five card in to your damage, and end that turn. So, that's pretty cool, but it's not that great when you consider the fact that, yes, it doesn't help you win, it helps you not lose, but it doesn't help you win. So you're going into a vanilla stride that turn, which is like, eh. And also, if you're at five, and you get hit with a card with like two crits, you actually have to finish the damage before the turn auto ends. So like, that's kind of mad just because you could still theoretically lose even if you do this. And the big one is that you lose your entire hand going into this. So even if you survive, you're pretty much just starting from scratch, which is just like, yeah, you want, you're not dead. But what else are you going to do? It just, you gotta, you gotta keep that damage on, which really kinda, kinda sucks. I don't know. I don't know. It just, the fact that it doesn't actually do anything to help you win the game is just kind of like, eh, alright, I guess. Actually, the thing that I hate about it the most is the fact that it's a progenitor dragon, so like, you want to abuse free stride, but you're not going to want to use this until the late game when you might actually lose, not when you're at, like, two damage. Yeah, when are you going to use that skill, or when are you going to get the free stride? All right, we're going to rank them. First place, I think, is probably going to go to... You know, maybe I should have thought of this before I actually started the video. I think I'm going to give it to... Gilgal, just because it's a board wipe, which really hurts Excel clans. It count can ca theoretically give you a counter charge five, depending on how much damage you have. It's pretty much good at all stages of the game. A board wipe is never bad. Late game when they are running out of resources, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so I think Gilgal, and very, very closely behind, I'm giving it to Oragorum because it's the same thing. It's pretty much good at most stages of the game. It, it's good early just to get a lot of damage in. It's good pretty late, and especially because um, Nova Grapplers exist, it's easy to abuse in that clan and yeah i don't know Oregorm just seems pretty good just because setting stuff to zero and attacking a couple times seems pretty lit then i'm gonna give it probably to ball and arena just because similar thing ball and arena kind of functions similarly to Oregorum but it's not as good as early game as Oragorum, and also if you, for whatever reason, you don't have a lot of ones and zeros in hand, you can't do much, 
And it's really only, like, it's at its best in Aquaforce, where you're going to be calling a couple things. Like, it's not bad in Grand Blue or Bermudas. It's just probably not as good. So, like, yeah. Next. Uh, probably going to give it to Form Formido then, just because, like, you are able to get the retires off. If you're playing against a control clan that isn't Link Joker or Mega Colony or, like, whatever deck that can retire a lot, uh, and they have things and you don't, you can get pretty good off of it. It's so, it's good, it's just situational. Then I'm gonna give it to Mega Loma, just cause, like, yeah, you lose a lot, but if you're, like, main deck stuff can do stuff, you're coming back, and I just feel like you're gonna be going into it more than you are Agnes, just cause, like, you have to neg with Agnos, most likely, if you want to use it, or you just, like, either A, your hand is going to suck, so you don't want to rush anyway, so if you Agnos, you're going to have a shit field. B, you're going to have a field and hand, and you're just going to go minus to use it. Um, yeah, Agnos, I just feel like, is more situational than Megaloma, just because, like, it requires more setup than Mega, and, like, Megaloma, yeah, it has, like, the crit thing where you lose if you're at five, but you can tank the first hit, and then their turn ends. So, it's like, it's, if you are so far behind that you were gonna lose that turn anyways, even if you, like, you Miracle Healed once or twice, it can say, and, like, you were going to need to use your whole hand to guard anyways. It makes sense that you lose your hand. So it buys you another turn, which is never really bad. It's just the fact that you're probably going to want to use these earlier just to get the free stride. And it's a later one really hinders this as a card. But yeah, again, I didn't write a script. I read most of these as this video came out. So I'm probably wrong if you disagree with me. Let me know in the comments. You might be right. Honestly, this is just clickbait, so I really don't even care. I'm gonna pick up the ones that I need for my decks, even if they're shit. So, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, play that outro, sexy white boy. Sexy white boy.